It's really personable. Um, and uh, it's got a good sense of humor. But honestly, I, I'd be curious to hear about like who Robert actually is. Who am I? Well, I'm Robert Smith, if you need to know the last name. Um, I work here at K College. Every single time I'm in line, he always gives me these movie quotes that I have to find out. And sometimes I get them, and sometimes I don't, but I'm pretty impressed. Last scoop of chicken Caesar. That was the last scoop of chicken Caesar. However, I got another. Okay. Yes, sir. It's great. I mean, working with the students. I mean, I got a lot of students where I used to work. So I've actually met a lot of people, like some of the incoming freshmen actually, uh, they went to Kamsey at the, across from where I worked before. That's the Area Math and Science Center. So I watched them basically grow up and then go to college. And then I followed them to college. <laughs> Makes me sound like a stalker, but I mean, that was totally not planned. Guaranteed, I mean, I'm not that weird. I'm weird, I'm just not that weird. <laughs> We had a conversation about us both enjoying D and D, or Dungeons and Dragons for those of you who aren't cool enough to know acronyms. Uh, the first time I saw him at uh, working at Sax, um, he made a very good impression. He would um, he didn't know me, obviously, but he would uh, converse with me and uh, just a very nice uh, person to talk to while while ordering snacks. I don't know how much you want to know about me, but <laughs> um, born and raised in California, moved out here for a girl, still here, despite the snow, <laughs> but yeah, this girl, my wife, um, well, we actually met in a chat room on the interwebs, um, I was in California and I was just looking for a random room to talk in and hang out and I came across somebody with the screen name Lil Miss Attitude. You know, and anytime somebody's just like, hey, I have attitude and is willing to say it right up front that they have attitude, that's an interesting person. You gotta at least kind of figure out what kind of attitude they have. And we got to talking and I had to go through some different things for, I was planning on going into the army and this was all pre 9-11 stuff so I mean it wasn't as you know I think if 9-11 had happened around the same time I probably would have stuck with it however I met this girl and we started talking and I came out to visit you know I was only gonna stay for two weeks and next thing I know I'm calling my recruiter going dude I am sorry to do this to you but I met this amazing woman and I'm going to stay and, you know, Uncle Sam's going to have to do this one without me. But like I said, I'm pretty sure if, if this was post 9-11, I probably would have actually kept going, which makes me wonder what would have happened if I had, but man, it's, it's a heavy thought. And when you're in a cash register, you can't be nervous and you can't be timid. So you kind of got to put yourself out there, almost make yourself a, a whole new personality of who you are. You'll eventually learn that that person still lives inside of you, even though you're not punched in and you're not wearing that uniform. And then you realize that that person's been there the whole time, and you were just too nervous to let them out. So, I was, a, I was super shy in high school. He like, you know, makes the conversation. It's not just about like making what you want. You know, he, I don't know, he asks me how my day is going, which is nice. My son is now 13. 
he is he is my biggest motivation. You know, I see him do things, and I want to be like him. It should be the other way around, but it's not. It's, I mean, he is that kid that it's like everybody just gravitates to. It's like he has this aura of self-confidence, even though sometimes it's just a front. You know, he, usually he's nervous and he doesn't want everybody to see it, so he puts on this little confident mask. And he just walks around like, yeah, whatever, I'm cool, and, you know, you can come approach me if you want, but, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. We bickered for months over names. Uh, when we found out we were pregnant, the girl's name, we had it within like 20 minutes. We fought for boys' names all the way up until after he was born. Because I wanted him to have a name that wasn't super traditional, wasn't what the same name that every kid has. You know, my second grade class or third grade class, there was six kids with a different variation of Roberts. Six! You know, it's like we, we ended up having to change our names. You know, I, my mom grew up, I grew up, my mom called me Bobby. I was Bobby. And that was fine. Unfortunately, you know, I had to be Robbie one year because there was a Bobby, a Bob, a Roberts, a Rob. You know, it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. And then, you know, I didn't want him to be too crazy exotic named because, you know, it's like I want people to, be able to pronounce it and not look at him going, that is a weird name. So we fought and we fought and we settled on one for like five seconds and it was Alexander Scott. My last name's Smith. So you gotta, you gotta think about these things, because if you think about what his initials would be, I can only imagine him writing his initials on papers and people going, uh, sir, is this a joke? He's like, no, no, not at all. Because kids are little bastards to each other. And finally we settled on Christopher. But we decided we're going to spell it differently. So we spelled it semi-phonetically. So there's no P's, no H's. It's C-R-I-S-T-O-F-E-R. As simple as you can get it. And my wife's uncle died a couple days before he was born. And his name, uh, his middle name was Wayne. So she thought it would be cool to give him the middle name Rain and spell it like Wayne, only with an R, so it's R A Y N E. So his name is Christopher Rain Smith, and and we realized that we did make a mistake. We didn't think all the way through because when you say Chris Smith really fast, it almost sounds like Christmas. So it's like Merry Christmas. <laughs> so yeah. We, we, we goofed that one up a little bit, but I don't think anybody's really caught on till this video, when this video hits the internet, and then it's like, oh my gosh, let's make fun of him for this. Ha, blah, ha, we're evil. Evil kids. Rawr. I coach a lot, and I refereed for a year. Referees for soccer are some of the most punished humans ever. Because <laughs> no matter what they call, whether they call it right or wrong, it's a bad call. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, ref? You can't see. That, that was clearly perfectly legal. It's like, no, no, it wasn't. But you're always the bad guy. It's fun. I, I love hanging out with the kids. And I have probably eight that I've started at U8. And I still interact with them a lot because they're on the same team as my son. And just the growth that you see and the fact that you can look at that and say, I help them with that. You know, I, they still call me coach, even though I've not actually been their official coach for, you know, two years. I was, the parents still refer to me as Coach Rob. And it's, it's something that, it makes you feel really good that you've impacted somebody enough that, they still remember you, even though years have passed and, you know, you weren't in their life at a, for, but for a, a blink. But 
that blink was so memorable for them that they still carry that in their heart and their mind and it's it blows me away that I have that impact you know I don't really think that I do but then it's like time and time again you're like oh hey I remember you you were that coach and it was awesome we had fun you know it's like I want them to have fun yes I want them to learn and I want them to push and I want them to try and I want them to win but only if it's fun You know, the more than just make your sandwich, it kind of like makes your day, like, in a little bit. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy. We got to get my personal, personal with him and just talk a lot more. I guess we're both into just some various geeky things. We're able to bond over that and I get my sandwich. He always likes Doritos, but then again, everyone likes Doritos. That's not very surprising. I I call it like a unfortunately not a strong friendship yet, but like a correspondence. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick with that. That sounds good.